guys, Thomas Lissa the Genie here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Wonder Woman 84. If you end up enjoying this review, then please consider joining my Patreon. Any donations are desperately needed. That will be the second link in the description below. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the recap and review of Wonder Woman 84. So, ever first even the trailer first dropped, I think a lot of people noticed that this movie did not look as good as the first movie. And that's not saying a lot, but, you know, it looked like it was doing things that didn't seem good. Including uh, the look of Cheetah, Wonder Woman riding lightning for some reason. At first it was supposed to look cool, but then when you see it in its finality, it just, it, it's like, whatever, it's nothing. Um, so yeah, there was definitely a lot uh, against this movie, uh, but I decided to check it out anyways to uh, form my own review of it. Uh, this one will probably be one of my longer reviews. Uh, I will say that in advance. Uh, so, you know, I can save some people the time if they're going to be like, oh, long movie review, bad, just because it's long. I'll save you the time uh, by saying that now. So with that warning out of the way and spoilers, I don't know if anyone cares for that, um... That's also going to be a thing, even though this movie's been out for a bit. So, I feel it's warranted. Um, the last thing I will say, and I've said this before, uh, DC has always been better at doing uh, the animated uh, superhero movies more than more so than the live action movies. I have said this a while back ago. I believe I also said this during. I, I don't remember if I said that during my Wonder Woman Bloodline review. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to get into DC, watch their animated movies. Uh, that's my uh, ultimate. Uh, you know, again. That's where DC's at. If you want to be a fan of DC, you stick with the animated movies. You do not, you do not say, you know, Wonder Woman 84 is a good movie. That's for sure. Because um, it's not, unfortunately. Um, and even the first movie, I remember having quite a few issues. Um, though I have not seen it in a while, I do remember my biggest complaint was toward the ending of that movie, um, it just falling even further flat and even, I guess there were even further issues that even I didn't catch the first time around, though I have not seen that movie in a while, so I don't remember a lot of it. Um, anyway, enough of that. It's time for the recap. So, the movie starts off, oddly enough, uh, doing another backstory which for a sequel to do doesn't make any sense you would think they already covered that in the first movie so why would they do it again here well I have a theory and it's a theory that others have held but I will gladly also take that theory and say yeah that probably makes sense to why they did it this way uh, so anyways we see her as a kid Preparing for this all uh, Colosseum, all f Amazonian, which is all female, all uh, Amazonian event. Uh, and she appears to be good at what she's doing, uh, which I remember she was struggling a bit more. Now, I have two thoughts about this, right? So this is Wonder Woman. Uh, and for the longest time even before the first Gal Gadot Wonder Woman came out, uh, I always saw Wonder Woman as the female equivalent of Superman, right? A clear, obvious goddess with superhuman strength and the ability to fly and all this other cool stuff. So her being overpowered 
never really bothered me. But here's the catch, right? So, for example, for Superman, right? Superman, for a lot of people, is a very, I would say, mixed character. A lot of people are a fan of him, and a lot of people hate him. He's sort of like the, you know, it's sort of purely divided, right? And I'm one of the people who initially hated Superman until I started to realize why Superman works. Uh, and the reason, for me at least, to Superman works isn't, you know, it's not because he's this overpowered character, it's because the characters around him make him an interesting Lex Luthor uh, and his love life with Lois Lane. Those are the aspects that make Superman an interesting character. How he uh, goes about saving Lois and how they love each other and how Lois is this reporter who's willing to put herself in danger to get the latest scoop. Uh, how Lex is so jealous and so this thing is, it, it is not from Earth, therefore it must be evil and it must be stopped, you know, Again, these aspects are what make uh, Superman an interesting character, and the characters that surround Superman, uh, again, are what make Superman, to me, an interesting character. So for me, what would have made Wonder Woman interesting is to support her with interesting characters, and that's one of the biggest problems, especially in this movie. Steve, for example, her crush in this in the previous movie and following into this movie, which I'll get into a bit more, he's not really an interesting character, even in the first movie, from what I can recall. All if you were to ask me who is Steve and what does he do and you know what kind of person is Steve, the one thing I could tell you is that Steve's a pilot. And outside of that, I don't know. He's a pilot. He loves to fly. Which, you know, having aspirations is a good quality to have. I'm not taking that away from him. I'm just saying that seems to be about the extent of his character. Which I think you need a bit more than person loves thing to make an interesting and engaging character. Like I mentioned before with Lois Lane, it's not that she's just a reporter and loves her job. It's that she's willing to... You know, she's willing to get her hands dirty. She's willing to get knee-deep in to get that scoop. She's a little bit of a daredevil uh, in that regard. She has a bit more of a character in that regard as well. Just to make the comparison. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't mind Wonder Woman being inherently strong. The issue with it comes at the risk of they already gave her a backstory so we didn't need to do this again and the reason I'll get into this now I think that they added this is to go for the theme of the movie which they get into during the race portion of the movie uh, which is still early on so the theme is supposed to be about truth and truth is all above all, all else, uh, according to Wonder Woman 84, at least. Uh, and that the truth is beautiful, which, you know, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, it's that kind of thing where the theme of the movie overtakes the backstory of a character. And when you risk something for something else, that's usually when that someone like me has an issue. You should never risk something for something else when it comes to your movie or your story. Um, that's usually a sign of something really, really bad happening, in fact. So yes, she does indeed appear to be really good. Again, I don't have I actually don't have an issue with Wonder Woman even being good at a young age. I really, really don't. It's again at the risk of they already did the backstory, so I don't it's pointless. It's literally pointless. There's no point other than they wanted to add the theme to the movie. Um, 
early on. They wanted to have a through line from the beginning to the end. So during the race, speaking of, she loses her horse when she's in the lead. She keeps looking back like in, like, ugh, for whatever reason. So she falls off her horse, and the horse runs off, and she sees a path that scoops her down below further in the race. Um, however, she, while cheating, she also misses one of her marks, which every racer in the, in the race is supposed to, I think, hit every mark. Uh, that is indicated by these little banners that seem to go down whenever you hit a mark. Uh, so she misses one while taking that cheat shortcut, and when she gets to back to the, the main stage where they started, she's pulled aside by this warrior, I believe, one of the ones that was in the first movie, I don't even remember, honestly. Um, and she's even told that she cheated, uh, that she took a shortcut, and that also led her to missing one of the things, but whatever. So after she pouts, literally, uh, we cut to the 80s, which is where our movie now takes place. So we see this little uh, bit where there's the speeding car, and we see that Wonder Woman intervenes. Uh, and then we get a little montage of her, like, saving this woman at her wedding before falling into the water, and she's slightly off screen, all you see is the little whip. Uh, then you see the robbers. Oh boy. So there are these four robbers, and they're trying to steal something, and this also sets up our MacGuffin of the movie, the Swishing Stone. Uh, that's super powerful, and its rules are very wishy-washy, which is another issue we'll get into a little bit later. So, we have four robbers. They successfully get out of the store with their stuff, but then they separate two by two. Two of them go off in another direction from each other. Uh, and one guy fumbles with his gun that's in his pocket belt, uh, or his pants belt, I should say, like on, between his pants and belly, I guess. He fumbles his hand uh, down, you know, down there uh, when there's no need to pull out a gun in the first place. Um, and he's like fumbling and it looks really, really stupid. It looks like they did not know how to execute this scene properly. So he fumbles the gun out like an idiot and it, lo and it just looks really, really bad. And he, like, tells this other guy who's, like, trying to play it off, like, oh, I'm not a part of this. And he's like, hey, yeah, you, you gotta come with me. This isn't working. Uh, and the police know all four guys, I guess. Um, so, yeah, out of the four of them, one of them decides that he's up above uh, this little bridge platform. So he decides, there's this little girl who's just standing there by herself. He decides to grab this girl, uh, and pull her over the ledge, which causes him to have the girl. The other robber that's with him to be like, no, no, don't do that. Like, that's, it's too far. We are only here to rob. And the other two guys are on the opposite end. Uh, on the other, you know, also saying no, and everyone is saying no, but Wonder Woman happens to show up and save the child, first with the whip. Uh, she, for whatever reason, takes out all the cameras, which is, seems a little bit pointless seeing, since, you know, human eyeballs have already seen her. Um, so I don't know what the point of that was. Uh, she's able to crush the gun, which I, again, I mentioned, I don't have an issue with her being super strong. But her whip seems to move in really odd ways in this movie, I will say that. Um, like, she's able to grapple, like, two guys with the whip. I guess she's holding it by the middle, I think? It, it looks really weird. Um, and, like, she pulls them aside, and then she's able to grab the other two after whipping again. 
and she tosses them all off uh, outside and crushes them against this uh, police car. But not before the news mentions how, like, oh, this random woman saved us. Like, who could have done this? <clears throat> and again, like, how would news not spread of, like, people saying, like, oh, this woman that was dressed oddly and, like, you know, how would that get out? I don't, I don't understand. So, after that, we see that Diana, uh, that's Wonder Woman's human name, uh, goes to dinner by herself. She's thinking about Steve, which, uh, I don't remember this happening, honestly. Steve apparently died in the first movie. I legit forgot that that happened in the first movie. And I have tons of issues with this, uh, because Steve comes back. Uh, now, I mentioned comparing Steve to, say, Lois Lane, uh, and again, I mentioned how Steve isn't an interesting character, especially in this movie. Again, he's just not interesting, so bringing him back, it just doesn't make me care that he's back. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I don't care. So anyways, uh, we cut to, uh, Kristen Wiig's character, Barbara, uh, who is this nerdy character, uh, who's like, oops, I dropped my stuff, my papers during this, uh, and people aren't willing to help her out. But Diana happens to also work with her, uh, and she decides to help her out. So Barbara decides to invite her to lunch, she refuses at first, and then Barbara's like, uh, talking about, like, what she does. She's like, her character, besides being a nerdy character, uh, seems to have dialogue that, uh, is very talkative at first, and then gets really mumbly after the fact. It's like, hi, my name is... Barbara, I'm ba 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 ha ba ha ba ha ha It kind of goes like that. Like, you you at first understand what she's saying, and then she kind of goes, goes into this soft mumble that you can't understand what she's saying, and I'm not sure what the point of that is supposed to be. Like, I don't understand. I just don't understand. Help me understand <laughs> someone in the comments what that was supposed to be, I don't know. So anyways, she's told that she's supposed to look at some of these artifacts, that they both work at this artifact location. So they come across one of the artifacts that came from that robbery that I mentioned, which is the, uh, this gold, this sort of light gold crystal, if I can describe it. So the two of them were looking at it, they don't see it as anything special at first, and then one of the, the, kind of, the, Diana, sorry, reads the Latin words of something about it being something about wishing. So one of the doctors, or, yeah, I guess it's a doctor, wearing that kind of clothes, so I just, I wrote my notes, doctor, uh, comes over overhearing the two of them, wishes for a coffee, and then the, like, a few moments later, gets a cup of coffee, and the two of them are like, huh, that was weird. Uh, they don't talk it up to convenience at any point, which I find kind of bizarre. They kind of start to believe it pretty quickly that its ability to wish is, you know, well, it's sort of in between, I guess. I don't know. So the two, you know, Diana's becoming a little bit interested, so she's like, eh, you know, I'll take this, uh, Barbara out to lunch, why not? So they're talking, and they, Diana mentions how she was in love, uh, with Steve, uh, and that how he died, she even says that herself, uh, what he did, again, he was a pilot. So we cut back to Barbara after the fact, uh, and she's chilling, giving this homeless guy some stuff, uh, and then she's kind of walking her way home, and then one guy, who's 
clearly drunk, uh, is like uh, cat calling slash flirting with her, but he does get a bit grabby. So, you know, that's bad. So Diana, who just so happens to have followed her, I guess, uh, comes to the rescue, uh, taking him out using her powers really quick, uh, but, you know, using a good excuse, I, I suppose. So she's trying to keep her little uh, powers secret again for whatever reason. So, uh, when she gets back, uh, Barbara wishes to be more like Deanna. She has a crystal on hand, so she officially made a wish. It shows this little wind push like thing happens, so that's a thing that's consistent within the movie. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, her start of the change begins with her luck beginning to change. She's able to hop, hop over this little water spill accident that occurs. And she doesn't really think much of it at the time. It's okay. Um, you might think, oh, that was a little bit odd. So the movie is going to take a little bit more time to show you that she has powers, which the first one is understandable. The second one is completely unnecessary, by the way. But we are now just introduced to the most interesting character in this movie, Mr. Maxillard. This guy is played by, I know this, uh, based off of the look. Uh, even though I have not seen Mandalorian, I know that this guy plays the Mandalorian. And hey, unlike the Mandalorian, and I know this, he's actually able to act in this movie. Oh! So, that's, you know, he's able to act. And he's able to be a character. Uh, look at that. Um, and he ends up being the most engaging character in the entire movie. Uh, remember what I said about Lex Luthor. Um, Max, to me, is engaging. He's interesting, and I'll talk more about why as the movie recap goes on. So he's already looking into the Wishing Stone. He knows it exists uh, based off of the papers we see on his table, which, whatever, fine. Uh, and he uh, is returning uh, to his, where he works, this news station, and his son, Alistair, comes to visit. Uh, we know, based off of a little bit of exposition, that uh, his wife is done with him. He's his wife is seeing someone else, and uh, their son is in joint custody, based off, again, the, off of the exposition, uh, which they handle pretty well here, for all intents and purposes. Um, so, we already have something a little bit more interesting happening with uh, Alistair and uh, Max. We have someone who clearly loves his son, uh, uh, and wants to have the, his son have the best of the best. However, we know that he's a bit of a smooth talker as well. Uh, and we know that in his work that he's all about the oil industry. But he's a TV personality. He even says so himself. But he's in the oil industry. And he's told by one of his investors, like, you know, we're unable to find any oil. Uh, your TV personality has kind of been washed up. You have 48 hours left until we cut your ties. So now we know that he's desperate as well. So we understand his motivations pretty quickly. Uh, and so the Wishing Stone is now moved. Um, that's all I wrote in my notes, but I... I think this is where uh, he goes back to try to get it at this point in the movie. So Barbara, or maybe it's a little bit later, no, uh, Barbara moves it into her office. I remember now. So Barbara, uh, after moving it into her office, the Wishing Stone, she purposes, purchases excuse me, some cheetah boots because she becomes cheetah later on in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Deanna and... Uh, 
Barbara go to this party that Maxwell has invited Barbara to, but Dan is like, nope. But then she was like, oh, this Maxwell character, a little bit sus. Let me check in on this. So they go, she goes to the party as well. So all three of them are there now, as well as our uh, next character, which we'll talk more about, which is Steve. Anyway, Max makes her way to Barbara's officer, making out with her. Like, they were flirting, so, you know, she was pretty, I guess, swayed into that. Uh, he points out the rock, very clearly interested in it, again, knowing what it was, and he takes it for himself. So, while that's going on, we see Deanna meet Handsome Guy. And, no, I'm not kidding, apparently he's credited as Handsome Guy. And this Handsome Guy walks over and hands Diana this watch. And she, and, uh, she, I'm sorry, he says something that apparently Steve said to Dan in the first movie, I guess. The problem I have with this is that, notice something I never said in this review. Diana, to my knowledge, never made a wish. At least, I don't think she did. I might be crazy, I might have missed it, but I don't remember say, hearing Diana say, I wish Steve was back. She did say the word wish, but she wasn't touching the stone. Again, this comes back to the rules aspect. I thought that the rule was you needed to touch the stone to make the wish. She wasn't touching the stone. And she only says, I wish, but she, you know, she says, I think the line is, the exact line is, I think I know what I would wish for. Something along those lines. She never outright says, I wish Steve was back, which immediately causes so many issues in my head about, like, how did that end up working? Like, what? Um, so yeah, uh, Steve is now back and they kiss. Uh, as soon as Dan is able to recognize him and the camera does a little double spin around to transition a handsome guy into Steve uh, they start walking around outside after the fact and this is where it gets really bad Steve has taken over someone else's body yikes that's creepy in itself and when they go to the mirror in his house, not his house, Steve's house, this other guy's house, uh, we are able to see Handsome Guy, and when we're looking at him, we see Steve through Diana. So yes, he is clearly in someone else's body, which is creepy enough. Uh, so, while well, that's going on, uh, Max, who has the stone now, he wishes to become the Dream Stone. Uh, so the Dream Stone chatters into dust and he gets all, uh, Barbara, meanwhile, we cut to her, we see that she has stronger strength. Uh, as she's trying to open up a fridge, she opens it up by ripping it apart. And that's all you needed. Uh, then we cut back to Wonder Woman and Steve making out. Making out in someone else's body naked. So presumably they had sex? And while Steve's in someone else's body. In someone else's body. Oh boy. Um. So, you know. Uh, you know, Shadowversary said this is rape. <laughs> and you know, I would say this is the equivalent of the way it's represented later in the movie. It seems like he got drunk, this handsome guy, lost consciousness of the next 24 hours, some woman makes out with him, but it's not him. Some other guys essence got sucked into him 
and he doesn't remember any of this, apparently. And they have, they have sex. But this other guy has no say in the matter. So, he doesn't get to say yes. It's, it, it uh, <laughs> so yeah. Rape, in that sense, sure, okay. That's, um, you know. And, you know, Shadowverse, I saw, I saw a bit of that video. I didn't see the full video, um, but I got the gist of it. Um, you know, he says that no one else is making a fuss about it. And here I am, a small channel of about almost 200. Uh, and here I am saying, yeah, that's pretty fucking messed up. So there you go, Shadowversary. I'll tweet you this video. Alrighty. Because, you know, I love mentioning YouTubers by name because of my other persona, Zeke Dartel, who challenges the biggest YouTubers on this platform, including Rags from 1EFAP, by the way. And even Tona Loke, who once appeared on the EFAP. So, you know, I'm here for that. I'm here to call out YouTubers when it when it's, uh, you know, within the necessary boundaries to say the YouTuber's name. Anyway, getting back to outside of that, uh, creepiness, uh, I kind of lost track of my notes here. So, oh yes, after that awkward scene, which, by the way, it doesn't last too long, but it was completely unnecessary. Uh, but we cut to Barbara being super strong part two. She goes to the gym and she starts lifting weights and then she goes higher and higher and higher. Um, and she realizes that she's super strong again, which again was completely unnecessary. We already had her opening the fridge. We didn't need a second realization. So you could have cut that out from the movie, just saying. Anyway, Max the most interesting character, goes to the investor, his investor we saw earlier, who gave him the 48 hour time frame. So Max, with the wishing stone being him now, tricks the investor into making a wish. Uh, he's like, oh, you know, you should wish for this, and he just so happens to wish for the thing that he said to wish for. So, we cut to another unnecessary moment, which, even thinking back to the first movie, it seemed a little bit like, haha, you're having a little bit of a closed montage because you don't fit in with, for Deanna, and it made a little bit more sense back then, but even now it's just like, eh, it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a waste, but whatever, fine, you're a two-hour movie, fill, I guess, if we need a fill. So we have Steve going through a close, close montage, because he's now the one out of the times. Uh, and the two of them begin to travel uh, after that little sequence. Which takes a bit of time, by the way. Uh, anyway. So she's now showing him around to the different changes that has happened to the 80s. Meanwhile, Max, uh, while in the office, tricks his secretary, his only one, uh, to wish for more people to work for his little firm, the oil firm. So, more people just pop in from the ether, I don't know, uh, to work for him, and they hi he hires them all in the instant. Okay, so that's going on. So, Deanna and Steve are checking in with Barbara with the stone. Um, but the stone is gone. According to her, Maxwell now is the stone, as we know as the audience, but they don't know yet. So, we see that Deanna uh, is working her way to work inside this lock. She's struggling, which is odd. Uh, but... Whatever, we'll let that slide, because apparently she's losing her powers, which comes into effect later on. But we know from her that this is this little, uh, uh 
stone thing. Uh, the inner wording is apparently the language from the gods, according to her. Uh, and she mentions how the lasso of truth's power comes from the truth, which, okay. <laughs> I don't know why we needed to know the obvious, but okay. So, we learn from Max's office that he wanted to go to Cairo to get more oil. So, that's where he went. And they get into, um, Dana and Steve get into, uh, this plane facility really easily, easily, for some reason. She has, like, this card on her that allows them to instant access this jet area with the planes as well? Like, how does she have access to any of this? That doesn't make any sense. She suddenly has access cards for some reason. She doesn't even work there. It doesn't make any sense. She's an artifact person. Why would she be... Why would she have access to planes? Uh, uh So, as they're stealing a plane... So, we have rape, and now we have theft. Oh boy. So they're stealing a plane, uh, and as they're going, uh, moving the plane, Diana's like, oh fuck, radar, right. So now she turns the jet invisible. Now, okay, so here's the thing. We, in the early comics, uh, Wonder Woman had an invisible jet, which was odd because later on we know in some iterations that Wonder Woman could fly. Again, she's a goddess. She should just be able to fly, but for some whatever reason they gave her a jet that was invisible. So they have her steal this jet and then turn it invisible. Okay. <laughs> so they cut into the fireworks. Uh, they're in the air. They're, they're, they have a little bit of air flight time where they see the fireworks and like, ooh ah. And as they're flying, she's like, I don't understand this, the flight thing at all. So she doesn't know how to fly yet. We did not see her fly in the first movie, to my recollection. So, and she's climbing at the somewhat midpoint of the movie. She does not know anything about flying, which awkwardly transitioned to her later in the movie, flying. Of course. So anyways, uh, while all that's going on, Barbara is told, uh, is like walking, uh, sorry, is like walking in the street. Uh, she's walking and walking and then, you know, the hobo's there somewhere. But the cat guy, the, the uh, cat collar, uh, the one that was flirty and grabby with her last time is like, oh yeah, let me pick up right where I left off. Easy pickings, right? But now Barbara has her super strength. And so she goes to attack him. She stops and makes a clear uh, turnaround and kicks him down. Now, this is interesting. So, earlier in the movie, we know that Wonder Woman took this guy out, but, you know, disarmed him from the situation. At this point, Barbara has disarmed him from the situation. However, she's not done. She proceeds to kick the living shit out of this guy, and I mean mercilessly. I think she killed him? Question mark? Um, he kind of lays there not moving in, in the street by the time she's done. Uh, so yeah. This is supposed to establish that she's taking the bad side. She's going over the limit. You know, disarming the situation would have been fine enough, but she goes too far. Uh, you know, this is what the movie is showing us. Like, the music is indicating it. The way she's moving and looking at the guy is indicating it. All of the signs are there. And the hobo guy comes out and she's like, and he's like, oh, what's going on? What are you doing, Barbara? And she's like, mind your own business. And she walks off. Okay. 
So that happened. So Max is in Cairo. And once again, he tricks this uh, high-end guy into making a wish to cut off, as he puts it, he wants like these people who are outsiders to like not be able to come in. So this wall is magically like lifted. Uh, like it wasn't there, and now it's there. And the people are just like looking at him, like, "What the fuck?" Uh, meanwhile, Dan and Steve, while also already in Cairo, uh, buy a car after seeing the, the caravan of Max drive through, she, Diana, notices Max pass by the other way, which they were going pretty fast, so, you know, whatever. Uh, so they turn around and they get the, they buy this car off this random guy and they begin to give chase. And boy, oh boy, this has to be one of the worst chase sequences I've ever ever seen uh but the the worst part of it is the ending but we'll get there so uh they're the two of them are chasing after and they see max and max is like uh you know make sure they get rid of them so uh they begin uh she starts off disarming the first vehicle pretty easily she catches a bullet that was aiming for uh, Steve using her whip uh, and she's able to get shot which apparently in the first movie also happened I don't remember her getting shot <laughs> again I don't remember a lot of the things that happened in the first movie uh, you know so that's that's on my bad uh, so Steve moves into you know he's on the car so he moves towards this tank by like jumping on it and kicking the gun uh, that's like sticking out of the tank. Meanwhile, Wonder Woman flips the tank. It looks a little awkward. I would say it's not the most awkward. I think they try to make it make sense. It looks a little awkward, I would say, at most. But it gets worse. Don't worry. So, uh, she kick she's like struggling against these two vans. She's like kicking up against the other van. Uh... Steve has the luckiest luck on his side because the guy that his, you know, he's kicking the gun from comes out of the tank for whatever godforsaken reason, which was completely unnecessary, which allows Steve to get in there and beat the living shit out of him, so that's on that guy for being an idiot. But there's a new <laughs> there's a new issue afoot. Four kids are playing on the street ahead of them, and this this is where everything falls to complete shit, which was completely unnecessary. So, we have four kids playing on the street, and the vehicles are heading right for them. So, Wonder Woman, looking at Steve, uh, gives him a little bit of a heads up, and he pulls out a rocket launcher and fires it without any further acknowledging it. She grabs the rocket launcher with her whip, and rides the rocket launcher ahead, the rocket launcher being faster than the vehicles that they're on. She tosses the rocket aside, fine, but now she's at a speed velocity of whatever the speed of a rocket is. So keep that in mind. She grabs two of the kids because the other two have made it onto the street. The other two are still on the street. She proceeds to grab them by the neck at the speed of a rocket launcher. Which should probably kill these kids by the velocity of which she grabs them alone. But that's not the end of where they die. They, they're they dead for all intents and purposes. But they're not just dead yet. They proceed because she's, you know, she has the whip. So she whips up to something, I think it was like a pole above them. But she somehow lo loses her grip. She's losing her powers, I guess. Um, so she's losing her grip on the lasso of truth. So she proceeds to let go. And then what proceeds to happen is that the kids, I kid you not, puns, uh, I kid you not, land on the street first. 
they roll on the street, and you can clearly see, by the way, this is the most obvious it's ever going to get. They, you clearly see them turn into dolls, like mannequin dolls. Uh, hit the street. Her rolling... They're, they're down here on the street. She's above them, by the way. And then they're rolling this way. Uh, or this way. I forget which way they're rolling, but it doesn't really matter. The kids are now double dead. And Steve uh, is in the tank that stops just behind them. So, yes, we have rape, we have theft, and now we have murder. But the kids aren't dead. Because I guess they're super zombies that Dan has somehow protected. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that was all bad. And she, for whatever reason, she's like, shh, don't tell. Um, yeah, I I'm not sure how that works. Again, you were caught way, way, way sooner. Um, anyway. So, yeah, there's that. Uh... Okay. So, after that, uh, she makes her way with Steve, and they make their way to one of the streets, and she calls Barbara. She's like, we need the location of this, uh, this crystal thing. Uh, and Barbara's like, sure, thumbs up, I'm still with ya. So the three of them meet up. Barbara, Steve, and Diana. This is, this, by the way, should be one of the most important scenes of the movie. And it's not, by the way. They visit some random guy named Frank, who possesses this old book, which is their time for exposition. This should be the port part of the movie, by the way, where all of the rules should be laid out. It should be made crystal clear how this works. And we're getting sort of this... Steve mentions the monkey's paw, which for those of you who don't know... It's when it's based off of this movie, uh, uh, at least, you know, in their universe, it's just a thing, but, you know, there's a movie called Monkey's Paw. It's when you make a wish, and then your wish does come true, but it is in the expense of something else. So, for example, if I were to say, I wish to be a big YouTuber, I would become... You know, my subscriber count would magically rise up to, you know, whatever huge number. But I would lose, uh, you know, my friends and family, for example. I don't know, just something that I also care about. That's how it works, right? According to the movie is how that, at least that portion of it works, right? So Barbara, learning of this learns that the only two ways to get rid of this is to either kill Max, they don't ever say kill, they say, like, take care of Max, or to have people, humans, unwished for their wish. Uh, I forgot the word they use. They, I think it's, like, relinquish. Something like that. I forget, it's some sort of big word like that. Relinquish your wish, right? So those are the two ways we know of that um, they can get rid of this. And she doesn't want to give up either. And they, I don't think they did a good enough job showing Barbara caring f for both. Um, you know, she was weak and then she became strong. So I think they did an okay job with her strength aspect and her wanting to keep that. The other part doesn't fit as much, though, the her wanting to take care of Max. Like, they made out once in that party, and they only talked, like, twice. I think they needed, needed a bit more interaction, the two of them, Max and Barbara, for that scene to fit, for it to have as much impact as it does. Um, again, this should be the most impactful moment, we should clearly see that Barbara is in love with Max, but I don't think that's the the level it's at. So she leaves because she wants nothing more to do with this now that she understands the two things that she doesn't want to give up. Uh, however, Max is making uh, 
wishes on other people outside. And his son's, uh, his son Alistair comes in and visits once again. Uh, and Alistair was about to make some sort of wish, uh, but uh, Alistair cuts him off. Uh, but then he proceeds to make some sort of other wish. I didn't catch, I unfortunately didn't catch Alistair's exact wish words, but apparently it was like, I, I, I honestly don't remember, uh, uh, I'll be brutally honest, I don't remember what he said. Something about him sticking around or being there for him or something, I don't know. Uh, but what's more important is that more wishes are coming true all over because, uh, you know, he's moving on about. Uh, so Steve, meanwhile, is looking over some stuff at Dana's house. And Dana uh, talks about how uh, she apparently gave so much to the world. Um, which, you know, I guess over the years, I guess that's technically true. But with the context within the first movie, uh, I, I you gave a thing, I suppose. You gave your time and your sacrifice to be a superhero. Um, and she says she just wants Tim. She, you know, she wants that one thing. And she goes over this character uh, that was this original, like, uh, super badass uh, Amazon that warded off um, Spartans. Excuse me. Uh, I think her name is, like, Astoria? I think that's how you say her name. I don't remember exactly how she said it. Anyway, not the most important part of the movie. Anyway, so Max, through his wishes, uh, gets to see the President of the United States. Uh, meanwhile, Dana uses uh, this previous guy that was, like, flirting with her from the party to, like, get to the White House, I guess. Uh, so they're able to, like, get a tour from him, and Steve is there with them. So anyways, uh, Max tricks the president into wishing as well, and he wishes for more nukes. Ugh. Oh, boy. Um, so that's, you know... <sighs> So in the 80s, I don't know how many nukes the U.S. had, but I assume that even back then, we had probably more nukes than anyone else, even in the 80s, probably. But he really wishes for more nukes, because that's what we needed in this world. So that wish comes true, and for that wish... Uh, uh, Max, sorry, uh, says that he will take over as president. So he's now the president, I guess. The transition's a little weird at uh, that one, but whatever. Uh, it, it kind of fits, I guess. So anyways, uh, the two, Wonder Woman and Steve, see Max oh so conveniently again. So Wonder Woman, who's like, using her whip, grabs Max. But the others uh, that are with protecting Max get ready to fire, so Steve and Wonder Woman hide temporarily. Uh, Wonder Woman comes out in front, using her whip as a blocking mechanism as Steve fights in the background. Uh, and again, if Steve was a more compelling character, I'd probably care for his safety at this point, but I... Again, I honestly don't care, because again, he's not an interesting character in this movie. But, you know, Wonder Woman being the goddess, I, you know, whatever, fine. Uh, so she's moving towards them. Uh, but Barbara, now being super strong as we indicated twice earlier, stops them in their tracks. But the cops move in and they're, they're, they're holding the guns up to both. So the two of them, Wonder Woman and Barbara, get ready to fight while Max is trying to fight Steve. So Barbara and Wonder Woman uh, tussle, uh, and Wonder Woman uses her lasso, 
and grabs Barbara by the wrist. Uh, and she tells the truth, apparently, because, again, last of truth, right? It's on her. So she says she's not willing to give up uh, her wish. Uh, which, again, is actually consistent by the end of the movie. So I guess another point in the movie's favor. Um, but, you know, that's only two. Two good moments in the movie so far. So we have, uh, you know, Steve and Rex are fighting, as I mentioned, and Barbara cuts them off. So as Barbara has the advantage over uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Wonder Woman asks Barbara, what did you lose, right? Because monkey's paw, what did you lose? And according to at least Diana, she claims that Barbara lost her humanity, her bubbly personality, what made her her. And again, I don't think the movie did enough to show that even. Eh? Like... The aspects I think we're seeing are cut off completely. Anyway. So apparently Wonder Woman, as I mentioned earlier, is being drained of her power more and more. So that's why she's losing now. So Barbara joins Max. Uh, as they're going to a helicopter. As they learned about this new thing that allows the, uh, the United States to have the little bunker where they're able to access every channel in America and, you know, talk to everyone at once. Uh, so, uh, Matt, America is, is already going to going kind of nuts. A lot of more wishes were made off camera, I guess. Um, which, whatever, you know. Anyways, uh, Steve and Wonder Woman going through this really slowly. It's like in slow motion. Um, you know, he's the one saying, you have to let me go, uh, and she's like, oh, I don't want to, and she's like, and he's like, I was already gone, so, uh, she cries, and yada, 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 and thus she runs off and removes her sin, her, sorry, her sin, her wish. Uh, so her powers start to come back, so... Her losing her powers didn't last all too wonderfully long. Um, so she begins whipping up to this tower, then to this plane. And the words that he was saying about when they were flying together repeat in her head. And she's suddenly flying. She's like no longer underneath the plane. She's just straight out flying. Um because of the words that he said, so she suddenly decides to twirl her lasso and I guess that helps her move a little bit faster. I think they were trying to go for like a Thor's hammer sort of movement thing going on there, I think. I don't know. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, uh, so Barbara, while talking to Max, is talking about the lack of his rules. He's willing to give her an additional wish. So she wishes to be like the ultimate being in quote unquote apex predator. And I actually wanted to look this up and I, you know, is a cheetah an apex predator? I'm gonna open a new tab right here off camera. I'm gonna go to Google www adapt google.com sorry for this little detour that I'm having off camera is a cheetah an apex pex predator let's find out uh it is imperative that the persecution of cheetahs by farmers and local communities stop or their extension will be inevitable. Because of their role as apex predators, losing cheetahs will have a domino effect on the ecosystem. Well, would you look at that? They are considered apex predators. So ra Rags from EFAP was wrong on that one. Ha! Ha ha! Rags, I gotcha. This movie's still bad, but I got you on that one. Nice. 
All that took was a quick Google search, so apparently, yes, cheetahs are apparently apex predators. Nice. So they actually got that one right. Okay. So the wording on that was actually accurate. I was wondering that so profusely, so thank God for Google. Uh, anyway, back to the review, or recap, anyway. Uh, so, there they go to uh, Mexico's to the television area where he's able to make communication with the people of the world. Uh, and make more wishes to the people of the world while also taking other things along the way, as I mentioned. So Wonder Woman, with the ability to fly already, decides to use her whip to ride the lightning like once or twice. I think it's once. It looks awkward and is completely unnecessary at that point. So, eh. <laughs> So anyways, as that's all going on, Alistair seeing his father on the television wishes, wishes officially for his father to return. So, you know, that's still going on. Meanwhile, uh, Wonder Woman goes to her home base, takes the golden armor because she has it, and makes her way towards his base and fights off some shoulder shoulders by uh, tackling them to the ground. But Barba is now taking on the cheetah form, and she is now Cheetah. Uh, one of Wonder Woman's rivals, I guess. Excuse me. So the two of them proceed to fight. Uh, and her wing, her Wonder Woman's wings are being tackled. They twirl around on the whip for a little bit. Um, at some point, this electric cord breaks as they're both in the water. Um, and when Barbara refuses to re uh, let go of her wish, Wonder Woman holds her under the water, letting the electricity hit the water, which water conducts electricity, so, uh, Cheetah, as I'll refer to her at this point in the movie, gets shocked. And she carries her out of the water. And she's just laid out. But she's still alive, I guess. Um, even after that. So, she makes her way inside to the people, uh, to, sorry, to Max. And she's trying to whip around, trying to whip at him. But the wind is pushing uh, and she gets, like, pushed against the wall. So Wonder Woman starts to dialogue about how the truth is beautiful and how, uh, you know, how things, her, you know, she's talking about, like, how things aren't fair sometimes, but you gotta work at it, blah, blah, blah. You know, everyone goes through shit, uh, but the world is still beautiful even through it. And somehow, because earlier her whip did not reach Max, notably, but now her whip decidedly has decided to reach Max, wrap around his leg, and she's able to communicate with everyone around the world. So, I don't know when and how that happened, but whatever. Um, so everyone is, you know, is hearing what she's saying about renouncing all of their wishes, which, you know, she speaks English and people around the world, I guess, in this universe, understand English, like it's Tekken or something, I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, uh, she's continuing to dialogue to everyone around the world. Alistair, the sun, is moving out towards this war zone, so now, uh, as people are like stopping, you know, more people are stopping to wish and hearing what she's saying, Max is able to hear his son more clearly because all the voices in his head, I guess he just didn't hear his son's wish earlier. So Max, being uh, remorseful, removes his own wish, which was to be the stone in the first place. So he loses that power. As well as when he does it, other people start to unwish for their wishes as well. And this is where, again, things get a little bit awkward in terms of 
how the wishes work. Uh, you know how we heard people wishing for more nukes. The president did the nukes. We saw on the map their blips just vanish. Uh, we see the, one of the nukes blow up in the air. The wall that we saw erected earlier crumbles down so that people can go back. Uh, so it's... I, I don't know, like, is it indicating that, like, it's sort of like the dreams are, like, wish, like, it's a dream? Like, it's, it's, if it's not happening, I'm not really sure, like, because it seems to erase things completely. Like, if you had wished to kill somebody, they're back to life. If you would wish someone there, like Diana did, uh, Steve who took over someone else's body, that person's body returns to them, but they also don't remember what happened? While well, Steve goes back to being dead, I guess. I don't know. It's it's very unclear. Um, but Max, uh, again, runs off. And has the most powerful moment in the movie, which I'll give credit for. He has a really tender moment with his son. Uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the movie, his love for his son is very evident, and it becomes once again evident here in this moment. And it actually had the most emotional payoff in the entire movie, because he was the most interesting character. Uh, this goes to prove when you create an interesting character, you can more easily elicit an emotional response, which is what every writer should aspire to, uh, and it's the only scene in the movie that works as a complete scene. Uh, so I'll give that to the movie as well. So, uh, we have that moment, but we cut to Winter Time. The movie is not over yet, and Dan is looking around and seeing how beautiful the world is. She sees Handsome Guy, but as Handsome Guy return, and he's talking very briefly, and she's just smiling at him. Yeah. Um, and she looks to the sky. Uh, as credits begin to roll, because that is the end of the movie officially, but we're not done yet, because the end of the credit movie sequence is some location where we see this woman uh, almost get... Uh, hurt by this falling pillar, but another woman, uh, we see block it, and we, you know, and move it out of the way, and, you know, the thanks happen, and she's like, who are you? And the woman turns around, and we see that it's the original, or one of the original Wonder Woman. I, I think it's from the original Wonder Woman movie, question mark? I think. Uh, and then that's the movie. Wonder Woman 84. That's my full recap, and it only took an hour. So let's talk about it some more, shall we? So, I'm going to give the movie score at this point. I'm going to give it like a 3 out of 10. I think that's the fair... I think that's the highest I would, I'd be able to go for this movie. Um, this movie's pretty damn bad. Uh, again, I would not recommend it. Um, and I think one of the biggest issues comes from what we're spending time doing in the movie. Because the movie is two hours long, you would think for a two-hour movie that a lot more would be able to be covered. And I think a, a portion of that comes from, again, retelling the backstory about that. And again, I feel like they added that later on in the the sequence because they wanted to be like theme but again it was that sacrifice of you know whatever so they could have cut that out complete of the movie and we could have had more time in the the 80s um and even some of the early earlier sequences again uh the whole even the robbery I think they could have fixed up a little bit, make it a little bit more uh, easy to bear, <laughs> for example. Um, you know, having the guy randomly fumble his gun out for whatever reason. 
uh, just to call it the most obvious blunder, followed up by another blunder of like, I'm gonna grab this girl, and everyone's gonna be like, no! Uh, and you know, Wonder Woman's presence, like, why is she trying to keep it a secret? It's never really understood why, uh, you know, so, I don't know. You know, just certain aspects that don't make sense. Uh, Barbara, uh, and her character, um, I think they were... Uh, I think there's a start to her character, like, you know, I don't mind them doing a very clear, uh, sort of, oh, that's the word I'm working for, uh, cliche, I guess I'll use the word, that word, uh, you know, nerdy girl, fine, whatever, um, we've seen it before tons of times, and it's all about execution, right? And again, her dialogue at the first start, it seems like she's saying sentences and then sort of just mumbles off. And then, you know, again, I feel like if they had her more falling in love with Max, I think that, again, the exposition part could have been a lot more impactful. Um, the, the chase sequence uh, when they're in the vehicles was just utterly embarrassing. Uh, they clearly needed to work a lot harder on that, and uh, the obvious, um, the obvious takeout for the obvious doll is kind of like very laughable, um, you know. But that's an action sequence, so whatever, um, you know. And the points I give this movie more towards Max as a character. He's a the most interesting character in the movie. Uh, and again, this comes to the basics, right? How do you write a character? You give them some, you give them more than just their job description. You give them something to, you know, see what kind of character they are. And we see that with Max. And we see his struggle. So we understand why he's doing what he's doing, and we understand that the power is overtaking him, this MacGuffin, you know, when he wishes to become it. Um, you can kind of gauge that he's becoming more and more, you know, he's desiring more and more wishes because he's realizing his own body is taking its own sacrifice, right? It's becoming, he's bleeding out of the eyes, the ears. We're seeing that his body is unable to keep up with it. So when he's, you know, when he's sacrificing other people's things, he's like saying, I want your youth. I want your, you know, he wants more time because he, he knows, you know, that this is all happening. The blood is all happening. He knows that, you know, he won't be able to keep it up. And he wants to be at the top to impress his son, to be like, see, you can, you can be at this low point and make, still make it in America, right? That's his old shtick, even in the, uh, as a TV personality. Uh, and with Wonder Woman, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, I, I don't mind her being super strong, her ability to fly, whatever, um, you know, I, I think that they try to fit things that I don't think the movie needed. I don't think they needed her to have the jet if they were going to just make her fly, for example. Um, so, you know, you could take away the theft from her crimes. Um, and just the way that wish worked, right? Uh, taking over, Having Steve take over someone else's body... Probably not the best way to go, right? Uh, you could have just said Steve came back out of nowhere, right? Like, I just popped out out of the ground. Maybe even have him appear instead of, like, uh, in someone else's body, have him appear where his body would have been in the ground. Or, like, you know, and he's able to dig out or something. I don't know. Something that would, like, indicate that... It's not creepy, or as creepy, but it would still be creepy. Because then, it, 
you know, it wouldn't be rape, it would just be, I guess, the other thing, where you have sex with the undead person. I forget the word for that, it's like necrophilia, I think? Or something like that, I don't know. Um... So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you would fix that one. Um, I, again, I don't even know why Steve's in this movie. He's not an interesting character to begin with. And I think that even follows from the first movie. I don't remember him being an interesting character, honestly. Um, I think it, there's more to him in the animated movies. Again, I said it before and I'll say it again. DC's animated movies. Check out Wonder Woman Bloodlines. It has better action from what I can recall. I don't remember much of the story because it's been a hot minute. Um, but, um, yeah, I just don't remember enough for that to say more on that aspect. But anyways, uh, back to this. Um, again, there are parts that you can clearly take out, I feel, and you don't lose much. Uh, and again, just in terms of trying to not have a creep factor, uh, probably should be a lot more careful about how you do it, right? You know, treat Steve like one of the nukes. Have him just go, boop, appear, like suddenly. Suddenly blip into existence. Uh, in his own body, not in someone else's, and again, just have him blip out. That probably would have been the best of the three I can think of of how to fix that without making it super creepy or slightly but still creepy. Like, I think that's the best way you could have handled it, but the movie doesn't. Um, so there's that. Um, you know, the other people's wishes are just sort of happening off screen, which is whatever. Um... So yeah, uh, not great. Um, again, I would give the movie a 3 out of 10. Uh, I think I remember liking the first Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot, the, that version, a lot, except the third act. Uh, but I, again, it's been too long since I've seen even that movie, so if I had if I go back, I'd probably find a lot more wrong with the first Wonder Woman. I wouldn't actually even be all that too surprised, considering, again, their live-action movies are not good at, as good as their animated movies. So, again, my final recommendation before closing out is just watch the animated Wonder Woman instead if you're gonna uh, support Wonder Woman. That's the way to do it, including all the other superheroes, in, at least in the DC universe. Uh, with that being said, that's the 3 out of 10, uh, and with that being said, if you ended up enjoying this review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my Discord server, the other to my Patreon page. Any donations are desperately needed, and until next time, everyone, bye bye